Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present this video which explains what is LF symmetry and how it works. In this video, first I will explain optical constants which are the quantities LF symmetry characterize. For easy understanding of LF symmetry, I will show you polarization of light as well as light refraction based on three-dimensional animations. Finally, I will explain a basic principle of LF symmetry. Light has character of a wave, a light wave can further be considered as an electromagnetic wave. The electromagnetic wave has an electric field component and also a magnetic field component and these wave components are described by simple sine waves. In general optics, we consider only an electric field component of the electromagnetic wave. When this electromagnetic wave enters material, the light wave propagates continuously inside the material. If the refractive index n of the material is 1, the electromagnetic wave propagates without any change. However, when the refractive index of the material increases, the wavelength lambda of the light becomes shorter as a result of the interaction between the light electric field and the material. K, extinction coefficient, is an additional physical parameter that expresses the light absorption of materials. When K equals zero, the material is completely transparent and the amplitude of the wave does not change. But when the material has a high K, the amplitude of the electromagnetic wave decreases along the distance from surface by the light absorption in the material. The important point is that the propagation of the electromagnetic wave inside the material is determined completely by two physical quantities of n and k, and these two values called optical constants define material optical properties. Ellipsometry is an optical instrument that determines the optical constants of materials. A well-known absorption coefficient alpha is also calculated from k using this equation. In ellipsometry, N and K are determined from light polarization. The polarization of light is described by considering electric field vectors. And importantly, all the polarized state can be expressed by superimposing the electric field vectors oscillating in the x and y directions. At each point, the electric field component in x and y directions can be added to form a synthesized vector shown by a red arrow. In this case, the synthesized wave oscillate linearly, and such a polarized state is called the linear polarization. The linear polarization can be treated as a vector on the xy plane, and depending on the relative amplitude of the x and y waves, the orientation of the linear polarization rotate on the xy plane. Now, we consider a case when the wave in the x direction advances forward compared with y direction, and the phase difference is a quarter of the wavelength or 90 degree. For this case, we can also superimpose the two waves in the x and y directions. However, in this case, the synthesized vector rotate continuously on the xy plane as the light propagate. This polarization state is called circular polarization. Remember, light polarization is always described by adding two electric field vectors in the x and y directions. If we change the phase difference between the two waves, circular polarization changes to elliptical polarization and finally becomes linear polarization. The name of ellipsometry originates from the fact that light polarization often becomes elliptical polarization. Now, we consider light refraction on a sample. When light is reflected by samples at the oblique incidence, incidence angle theta becomes important. The plane containing the incident and the reflected waves define the plane of incidence. 
The linear light polarization oscillating parallel to the plane of incidence is called the p-polarization. In contrast, when the electric field is oscillating perpendicular to the plane of incidence, such light polarization is called the s-polarization. The polarized light refraction on samples can always be described by p and s polarizations. This animation shows a special case when the incidence p and s polarizations are refracted without any change. In ellipsometry, refraction of P and S polarization is characterized. In this general configuration, incidence light is P and S polarizations, and so the synthesized vector is a linear polarization inclined at 45 degrees from the plane of incidence. When light is refracted on a sample, P and S polarized waves undergo different refractions, and the reflected light show a different polarization state. Ellipsometry measures two angles, delta and psi of the reflected light. The delta is a relative phase difference between the P and S polarizations, and the psi is an angle determined by the relative amplitude of the P and S waves. In ellipsometry, the optical constant n and k of a sample is determined from these two values of delta and psi. This figure summarizes polarization state defined by delta and psi. When delta is 0 or 180 degree, the polarization state is always linear and the orientation of the linear polarization is determined by psi. When psi is zero, there is only S polarized wave, and when psi is 90 degree, only P polarized component exists and the polarization is linear independent of delta. We observe elliptical and circular polarization in these intermediate ranges. This region shows the left-handed elliptical and circular polarizations, and this region indicates a right-handed polarization state. Importantly, all the possible polarization state of the reflected light can be described by delta and psi. Now, we show you how the delta and the psi change with the optical constant of a sample. When the extension coefficient of the sample is zero, reflected light is linearly polarized with delta of zero or 180 degree, and the psi is determined by the relative amplitude of the P and S waves. When the refractive index of the sample is increased, the amplitude of the refracted P polarized wave gradually decreases. As a result, the psi value becomes smaller, so the change in n can be detected as a variation in psi. Next, we fix n to 1.1 and increase extinction coefficient of the sample. The light absorption in the sample changes delta significantly, and as k increases from zero, the polarization of the reflected light changes from linear to elliptical polarization because of the increase in delta. So the change in k can be detected as a variation in delta. Finally, this figure shows the change of the polarization state with n and k of a sample when the light incidence angle is 70 degrees. When k is zero, reflected light is linearly polarized and only the orientation changes with n. And when k increases, polarization changes to elliptical polarization. So if you determine the polarization state of the reflected light, you can determine n and k independently. In other words, elliptometry determine n and k from the change of the light polarization upon light reflection on the sample. Mathematics Practically, you can always convert psi and delta to n and k of a sample. This is the basic principle of elliptometry. Thank you very much for watching this video.